Okay, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for our time together. And Father, we want to be doing what you are doing right now. And uh, we just thank you for your presence, for your grace, and your mercy, for forgiveness, for being late. And Lord, we, um, we welcome your presence. We thank you that you are always on time. And Lord, we just desire to uh, follow you, what you're doing. Amen. Amen. So, Brian, how many do we have listening? We have 20 so far. Okay, 20. So we, we have some attrition. Okay, so on the way here, I feel Michael. And uh, what, what this usually means is, um, so we'll just train you all here. Okay, are, can you feel Michael right now? Do you feel Michael right about right there? Feel Michael right about there? Right there? You feel Michael right about there? Hey, ladies, do you feel Michael? Okay, right about there in your head. Do you have any sensation right about there? And yours is more right, right about like there. Okay, so... What we think this means is that um, we are with Michael, and uh, sometimes Michael shows up and sometimes Gabriel. Last night, I had the same experience again where I was being tossed back and forth between Michael and Gabriel, and I have no idea what that means. Uh, there's, there's a lot that I do not know, and the more we learn, the more I do not know. But it appears that... Um, we, we are in a waiting room in the heavenly places. And, okay, so now we're starting to travel. And so the Lord is going to take us somewhere. So this goes back to uh, Revelation 4. I saw a door open into heaven, and a voice said, come up here. So now we're coming up there. We're traveling. So... Do any of you have a sense of movement right now? Or like moving? So it's like I can feel Michael, I get the word, he's, he's moving swiftly. And evidently, we, we think that Michael may be in charge of the watchers, uh, or the watchmen that are on the walls. And these are spiritual beings mentioned in Daniel 4, and also alluded to in Daniel 8. Okay, Deb and Don are the ones that we can see. Do you two see anything right now? We're still moving. I don't see anything yet, Paul. No. Okay, got to help me here, ladies. What about you two? Do you see any, Melissa or Jenna? Okay, you need to get in the mic. I think I have. Do it. Oh, you're on. I didn't see you. So she has like, it looks like on Star Trek when you go into warp speed. That's actually what it kind of feels like. Okay, we're still moving. Hey. So what we do is we wait to see... What happens? Okay, now it's starting to, can you feel there's, there's a shift? Okay, now we have shifted and I feel a constellation. Yeah, right there, Don. You feel that? Yeah, so Don, can you feel the constellation? So, so now we're in a constellation. And so this is not astrology. 
Uh, this is astronomy and the spiritual stars. Okay, so for those of you that are, are listening, if you just try to uh, sense if you feel something on your head right here. So I'm feeling, I don't feel Michael anymore, but I feel this constellation, so it feels like, um, like a sparkler, where you feel many of the sparks. Do you feel that? Not yet. Okay, right about there. Do you feel that? Oh, let's get you on the mic. I feel something right back here. Okay, that's it. And what about you? Do you feel it? This feels exactly like, like a sparkle, yeah. Alka seltzer kind of thing. Like Alka seltzer, exactly. <laughs> Do you feel it? Not yet. What we say not yet. Okay, right about there. What about ladies? Do you feel our Sydney ladies? <clears throat> yeah, right. Yep, right there. Yep, you're doing good. Okay. Now I have no idea what this means yet. <clears throat> you see anything, Melissa? Deb, what are you getting? Oh, put your, your mic on. Deb, mute your, unmute. There you go. It's still muted. Well, we can't hear you. Can oh, you hear me now? There you are. Like okay. a Verizon commercial. I felt sparklies all over my head. And when we were traveling, I saw canyons and a sunset. And then when we shifted, it was like a white space-like highway. Uh-huh. And then the sparkly thing started happening. <laughs> OK, so why the Lord is doing this today, <laughs> I have no idea. But well, we have to do what he's doing, right? Right. <clears throat> so we start with Michael. Now I feel like a news commentator who's trying to fill enough time until we figure out what's going on. Okay, so I put my hand on like this. So if you take your hand, and this is the fivefold ministry apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. So my evangelism finger is going off right now. Okay, now, uh, wherever we are, there's an angel showing up. So, Brian, could you put the grid picture up again? So, the Lord has been revealing to us that, that the universe is made up of grids. And uh, so, we'll put the grids up again. Then, Janet, you can get ready because I think you're going to get a message. Okay, so here's the grid picture, and um, so, it, so picture that we have gone uh, through one of those green dots into the dimensions, uh, which the Bible calls the heavenly places or the heavenly realms. Okay, we have traveled somewhere, and this is a place that appears to be a place of, uh, of pretty, um, pretty good protection. I don't feel any evil here. Uh, I get the word right now, we're in a hidden place, so we're in the heavenly realms, and the Lord has something for us to do, and by discernment, it may have, it may have something to do with evangelism. Anybody else, anybody else feel your middle finger being, uh, yeah, it's like someone's holding on to it, yeah. So it has something to do with evangelism. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, your mic's, her mic's not on? Okay. Okay. Let's see. You're on, you're on mute. Okay, so now, 
Now do it again. He was okay. on mute. Am I on now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I'll do that again. I, to me, I, I found that when I feel my bandwidth going off, I have to do it again. And this is <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. Jan, do you want to stand up there? Because, so, my friend Jana often will receive words from angels, so remember to face. Your, your pockets. Wait, we need a lot of fix in here. Today. Yes, we do. <laughs> Maybe it's prophetic. Okay, so I'll type this up. Where's the stage hand? You know? <laughs> Makeup. Okay. Hmm. So, um, just for your training, so ladies, come here. Yeah. Okay, come here. And you feel it. she's standing right now in the angel. So see, you can feel it. They're right there. Yep. Okay. So remember, the angel is not here. We are all there. Mm. So that means that whoever you are watching, and also Don and Deb, you should be able to feel the angel. You feel that, Don? Yeah, they both feel it. Mm. Hey, ladies, you want to come? Do you feel that? So right there. That's the angel. Right there. Right there. So this may actually be a, a, a foot or a leg right there. Yeah. So do you all feel it? Oh. Hey, hey. Well, I, I really do think this is maybe a foot. So it's really. So I, I have a sense maybe it's an angel under Michael. But I. OK, here it comes. Here comes the message. Praise to the Most High. Praise to the glory of His name. Holy and awesome God. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. This time has been set for you. Say again? This time has been set for you. Mm. A time of discovery. A time of recovery. Oh. All that's been lost. Behold, all things become new. Oh. <clears throat> So wherever you are, see if you can feel that angel, and well, I feel extra pressure right here in my head, which tells me that's a message. Whew. Set your mind on things above. If truly you're raised in Christ. Set your heart in love. Whew. Hmm. Heaven has a mind. And you're the sound that releases its design. You're in a time of preparation. for a prepared generation in the earth. Truly, the earth has given birth. So heaven will fill. Oh. Well. So heaven will fill? The earth. Will fill. <coughs> A time of regeneration, a time of recreation. Whoa, 
A. Mm. Establish a sphere. A sphere is a gate. Sphere? Sphere. You enter in through the internal place. Internal or eternal? Internal. Mm. Mm. Establish a sphere, create a realm. Create domain, a domain, empower dominion. It's an internal affair. From the inside out. It's a sound from within. That's what it's all about. It's the key to take okay. back. Just a second. <laughs> what has been lost in corporate domain. Empowered dominion. Mm. Oh. oh, oh. Hey. Mm. Oh. Whoa. Some of you have been fighting the wrong battle. Instead of embracing a forged weapon for, for the battle. A forged weapon? Weapon. OK, hmm. Brian. Oh, wow. You've been prepared by the spirit to overcome. Who always leads out in triumph. From glory to glory. Oh, wow. From strength to strength. Start from the higher way of thinking. That's your real place. Then take back what's lost. Then take back what's lost. Establish your position. Don't count the cost. Don't count the cost? Right. I think that's it. Okay. We'll see you, Melissa. Okay, so let me read it again. Yeah, what I said. Um, this time has been set for you, a time of discovery, a time of recovery. All that has been lost, behold, all things become new. Set your mind on things above. Truly you are raised in Christ above. Set your heart on love. Heaven has a mind and you are the sound that releases its design. You are in a time of preparation for a prepared generation in the earth. Truly, the earth has given oh. birth, so heaven will fill the earth. A time of regeneration, of a recreation. Establish a sphere. A sphere is a gate. That's interesting. You enter in through the internal place. Establish a sphere. Create a realm. Create a domain. Empower dom dominion. It is an internal affair. 
from the inside out is, is a sign from within that is what it is all about, it is the key to take back what has been lost, a corporate domain, empowered dominion. Some of you been fighting the wrong battle instead of embracing a forged weapon for the battle. You have been prepared by the Spirit to overcome, who always leads out to triumph from glory to glory, from strength to strength, starts from a higher way of thinking, then take back what is lost, establish your position, don't count, don't count the cost. And one guest writes, uh, could it be related to sanctifying time, uh, coming holy day shout, a report discerning an ungodly gate over the region of Montana in the 90s. Uh, yes, that is what I asked as to what was going on, holding things back, happening, and that is the thought I got. There is a grid over the area. I think it would be over the whole western part of the state from north border to south. Okay, without you knowing where I think we're going next, um, we may be onto something. Okay, and we have 26 online now. So, Deb, you have something? Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you, Deb. Okay. Um, Deb is in uh, Hawaii. So don't... Aloha. Aloha. Debra. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jana. Okay. Um, I just went on a mission trip in April to Japan. And while I was on the plane, the Lord told me, uh, look for the grids. And I, I was not thinking about Paul Cox. Sorry, Paul, but... <laughs> I wasn't thinking about any of no that. No offense taken. <laughs> um, so when we got to the second place we were staying, they had a scaffolding around it. And it was under intense spiritual warfare. Just um, our friends stayed there, and they have this issue. So we danced there. Oh. And so that was it was a grid around that place. The mm. second place I, in Japan had a scaffolding around it. I mean... It, and it was a global mission center in Iwaki City where we stayed, uh, which is up near the nuclear reactor uh -huh. in Fukushima Prefecture. And, I mean, I saw the scaffolding at the other place. and well, yeah, that looks kind of like a grid. Okay, oh, he said pay attention to the grid. Then when I got to Iwaki City and this place... When you got to where? I, Iwaki City, the global mission center. We stayed there. Okay, I, I missed the name Iwaki. 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 I -W -A -K -I. Where is that? Iwaki. It's in Japan. <clears throat> it's a what? Japan. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. Now I got you. So what? The first place, second place I stayed in Japan had the grid around it. The third place we stayed in Japan had a grid around it. And then I went, oh, I have no idea what it means, except that I was doing evangelism. This was in a foreign country. <coughs> And then I saw a third grid here in Hawaii. I went to a meeting in a hotel, and only there's two towers, and the to tower that I was having the meeting in, the grid, <laughs> had a scaffolding. So, interesting. Very interesting. So you actually saw it in the spirit? No, this was sca physical Oh, physical grid. Okay. Okay. So I wouldn't miss it. <laughs> okay. Um, again, I'm not quite sure why the Lord's doing this. <laughs> you have something? Actually, when Jana was prophesying about the yeah, you need to be right there to here. Yeah. About the corporate, something about the corporation. Mm -hmm. I kept seeing the web, and it was .com, .org, .net, and it, they were all crossing. And oh. I wondered if it had something to do with corporate domain. Corporate, yeah, because when she said domain, that's where I started seeing domain names. Oh. And it was like taking domain or taking dominion over something, and it felt like it was tied to corporation. Okay. And that, uh, would, that would be the grid, Paul. Okay, um, Deb Reed, we cannot see your camera on Skype. Okay, so um, ladies, I guess we're all 
ladies except for me and Brian, Brian and Jameson, of course. <laughs> That's um, good. <laughs> now we see a picture of Deb. There she is. Okay, so this, uh, this is all brand new revelation now. Uh, I was having a prayer session with someone, I think, I think it was last week. And uh, let me get the word for you. Um, what happened? Mm. Okay, I'm, I'm looking up this word that happened to me. <coughs> Let's see. Okay, this is on May the 14th. Uh, I was um, praying with a person who's down the intern program, and uh, I, I discerned the Prince of Persia. Um, so this is where I think that we may be going. The Prince of Persia is tied to a land area. So those who wrote about Montana and the grid in the Western United States, so I think there's something about this. Also, Deb, you talked about um, the grid and it seemed to be tied to the land and the earth. Yeah. Okay. And there was a sudden shift in my exhaustion level. I, I'd been really, I feel like I say this all the time. I was really tired. <laughs> like I'm always, I'm not actually tired right now, but I was really tired. And all of a sudden, my exhaustion level changed and I, I was fine. Um, I, and I then found a new building and I thought the word principality. Well, I looked the word up in principality. Uh, that was in, I think it's in Ephesians, and it's actually the word um, ruler. Right. It's, it's not the word principality. And so, um, I'll tell you where I think it was. So I, I, I'm feeling the same discernment right now, so I feel it here, and, and it's like a arc going all the way over my head to here. And I talked to Raylene, our lead intercessor, and she said oh. it looked like a, like an arc of stars. Well, actually, I feel here, an arc of stars going over, over my head. Yeah. So let's start with that. Do any of you feel that? It like it, it is like it it overrides my entire discernment. So again, I feel it here. It's like an arc going all the way over like this. And it's like it encompasses everything that I discern. Do you have a sense of that yet? Okay. 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 I had that I had that earlier. Did I hurt you? No. I had that earlier. It went from one ear clear over my whole head. Yep, that's head right. Ear. That's what I'm feeling right it's now. It's a whole arc. Yep. It wasn't just on top. You were at. You were asking if we were sensing something up here, and I said no. Mine went clear around. <coughs> okay. Uh, this is shocking revelation for me. And so I believe this is discerning the sons of God. And I believe, uh, so wow. I, I want to be really cautious about this because this is, we are on the learning curve now, okay? But this could be the really big deal. So this, <laughs> okay. So uh, t uh, this intern, uh, an inter intern program, she got this word for me. Uh, the Lord has been waiting for this time. Now will the real warring begin. In the past you have had battles and now the real war begins. You will be my right hand. Uh, she oh, sees wow. us standing and speaking to God. You will crush the enemy. Uh, she says, I, am seeing, I see armies standing behind us. There will be a multiplication of yourself. There are people standing behind you, dry bones with flesh coming on them. Uh, war means more people, more in the battle. There will be a, yeah, there's the corporate war. There'll be a bigger impact like a tidal wave. 
And remember, Deb, we talked about tidal waves, and I saw a tidal wave coming from the west, I think it's from Hawaii, <coughs> and it hit Newport Beach. Um, God is going to assign you bigger angels to tear down territorial spirits. More protection when you walk, they walk with you, bigger than what you've had before. Uh, I was in a session two day, uh, three days later, excuse me, one day later, I'll get it right, with another person from Minnesota, and this is when I realized these are not principalities, but these are the sons of God and the fallen sons of God, and this we believe is the original war. So now I, I'm going to start talking to you about uh, what what I think. Go to Deuteronomy 32.8. I, I uh, got a hold of a, a very, very advanced um, uh, theological paper on this verse. And um, uh, Deuteronomy 32.8. Now, just just give you an idea where we're going. This seems to be tied directly to the land. And and I, I am believing at this point in my life. Now, we need to be able to do research and development and understand that I'm not declaring these things to be true. Okay, mm-hmm. but we are we are we're we're going to put it out there, and we're gonna we're going to investigate. Yeah. All right. The word said explore. Explore. Thank you. We can explore, and um, you know, I don't anybody write me and say I'm a heretic. We're just talking about this. I, I really do want input. Okay, so we we'll start with Deuteronomy thirty-two eight. Uh, start with verse. In fact, why don't we start with verse one? Give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Let my teachings drop as the rain, my speech distill as the dew, as rain drops on the tender herb and as showers on the grass. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just. A God of truth and without injustice, righteousness Righteous and upright is he. Mm. They have corrupted themselves. Mm. They are not his children. Because of their blemish, a perverse and crooked generation. Do you thus deal with the Lord, O foolish and unwise people? Is he not your father who brought you? Has he not made you and established you? Remember, and here's the key part, remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father, and he will show you, your elders, and they will tell you, when the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Now, the phrase we're going to look at is um, the children of Israel and uh, the paper that I got a hold of, I think, does a, a very, very deep work, theological and biblically, that say this is really according to the sons of God. Okay, so the number of the children of Israel, the number of the children of Israel would be 70. That was the number that went down into Egypt. Also, the, remember, there were 70 elders under Moses. And so... The land was distributed according to the number of the sons of God. And that would be 70. Now, there are more nations than that today, but evidently, originally, there were 70. Give ear, O heavens. Give ear, O heavens, right. Okay. So, uh, Jen and I were actually together on the East Coast when... We first uh, had a, a person we were praying for saw all of this, and and what she saw is that she saw the sons of God, mm-hmm. and this was uh, now two years ago or three, actually it was two years ago. It was just before the revelation of uh, Melchizedek. Okay. Actually, yeah, it was about the same time. It was the day after because yeah. we I got the revelation 
the start of the revelation of Melchizedek on Pentecost 2010, but it wasn't not until probably the summer that I realized it was Melchizedek. So the sons of God, we think, were the original creation of God, and uh, it, it is possible they were given creative ability. Now this is, you know, this is still theory. Um, and if we are correct, there are 70, and they were assigned places on earth. Okay, and so when, when the whole earth fell, it's possible that these sons of God also fell. And this is what we have in the past called territorial spiritual principalities. They are not principalities, I believe. They are not territorial spirits. They are sons of God. Now go back to um, go back to Genesis. Mm -hmm. Ow! Ow! Sorry. Genesis chapter six. And Lord, I just thank you that we're in a protected place right yes, now. Yes, Lord. This is chapter 6. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God okay, saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives from themselves all of whom they chose. So there's something about these sons of God that they actually could, could copulate with women. And the result of that copulation was the Nephilim. Okay, um, Barbara says, was looking up the sons of God last night, the 200 watcher, fallen angels, interesting. Uh, my Bible says children of Israel, footnote that saw angels of God. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, um, uh, Michael Heisner who actually is a consultant for Logos Bible Software, uh, wrote this very, very detailed paper based on the Hebrew Ugaritic text and the, um, looking at all the different texts. And I think pretty much has determined that this, these are the sons of God. Okay, so now you go to um, Job. That is very amazing that you looked up that sons of God last night. Um, that is is, see, that's God. Hello, um, Deb Reed, I can see you now. Where are you, Deb? Yeah, you're muted. Yeah. Where are you, Deb? I mean, where am I? Yes. What did you ask me? What city are you in? I can't hear you. What state are you in? City and state. Oh, North Carolina. I thought you were from the South. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Job chapter 1, and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan was among them. Now just look at that. What is the emphasis on? Sons of God. The sons of God. Okay. Then you look at chapter 2. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. It's the same idea. Is it possible that the sons of God were the original rebellious against God? And, and their goal is to take over the multi-universe worlds from God. But they needed to have mankind involved because... Man was given authority over creation. And so they enlisted Lucifer to join them. And the deal was that Lucifer would get the earth, and they would get the multi-universal world, universe world. That's just, I'm just asking that question. Okay, now this is the one that I am really going out on a limb on this one, okay? But we're taking a huge leap here. 
Because I, 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 I'm waiting for the prophetic word to come out from the internationally known prophets on this one. But look at Romans chapter 8. Ooh, that's where I was this morning. Are you serious? Uh-huh. It's my inheritance chapter. Okay, um, and I want, um, let's see, let's, start, have, let's have someone read, uh, Melissa, could you read that for us? Uh, verses 18, verse 30. So we're in Romans 8, and read 18 through 30. Okay. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall re- be revealed in us. Mm. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains until together until now. Not only that, but we also who but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope after for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself (coughs) makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints. In fact, Jan, in your word, you said the mind of heaven. The mind of heaven has a mind. Yes, go ahead. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Okay, so look at the two verses. Verse 19 For in the earnest expectation, the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Okay? And then you um, go down to verse 21. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, up until last week, I always believed that the sons of God were us, that all creation was waiting for the revelation of us, the sons of God. Is it possible the Bible really means what it says, that all creation is waiting for the revelation of the righteous sons of God who will take back the land areas, take back the land areas the way it was originally supposed to be? Mm. That is my question. Um, That's been my question. <laughs> yeah, footnotes uh, 32.8, possibly related to lesser deities. Uh, okay, I want to pursue that. Uh, head has been hurting all morning and is intensifying deep within. I've had body aches for years, but it was bad yesterday. Uh, yeah, my son is reminding us uh, that we only use the 66 books of the uh, canon and not the Apocrypha, and especially not the Book of Enoch. Now, let me tell you how I want to deal with the Apocrypha, especially the Book of Enoch. Uh, we, we take the 66 books mm-hmm. of the canon as the inspired Word of God. Right. I would treat the Book of Enoch like I would treat a prophetic word. In other words, the prophetic word could be right, but I'm not going to base what I believe on the prophetic word. In other words, uh, a prophetic word, if it does not disagree with Scripture, could be accurate. 
Okay? So the Enoch, when it does not, this book of Enoch, when it does not disagree with the 66 books, could be accurate. But on my part, I, I can get in enough trouble anyway just by <laughs> believing the, what the Bible says. Stay on the foundation. Yeah, but it's true. You know, it, and when, I, when, I, when I stay to the text, people still argue with me, and I say, well, look at the context. What does it say? Well, and then the question, then the statement is, but that's not what it means. Uh, now, now, the problem is, who decides what it means? I would rather decide what it says. Now, I know this gets dodgy, and this gets all into hermeneutics. For example, uh, this is the whole ex uh, issue of homosexuality today. And, it, 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 you know, in our culture, we're saying, well, the culture has changed. Just like um, the culture has changed, we can now eat seafood. And we eat bottom feeders. Uh, and, and that can be addressed, frankly, theologically. And uh, I can commend some books to you that will deal with that. So we're not going to go into that. But I just want you to be aware that I understand the whole human hermeneutics thing and theological issues. So having said that, um, is it possible that all creation has been waiting for the revelation of the righteous sons of God to take their position on the earth because the earth has been contaminated by these 70, I don't, I don't, I don't, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how this all works. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we talked, we've talked about fine territorial spirits ever since I started doing uh, generational deliverance. And now I'm wondering, we, we have not understood that these were really sons of God. Now, one final passage, and we'll have some questions. Look at Psalm Psalm 82. Oh. And this goes to the footnote of um, that one of our listeners said about Deuteronomy 32.8. Uh, this has always been a very troubling passage, this whole issue of sons of gods and lesser deities. Let me just throw out something else. We're just, we're just having fun here, right? We're just, we're just exploring this. Is it possible that the, uh, the, panth the Greek pantheon, the Roman pantheon, mm. uh, the Nordic pantheon, or the gods of Valhalla really are the fallen sons of God. And all these movies that are coming out now, uh, even uh, Avengers, which I've now seen twice, which is a really amazing movie. Isn't it? But you see, it's about the fallen sons of God, I think. And see their influence on the earth. The Greek pantheon is about, uh, we're, we're in Psalm 82. But they're the redemption. So, anyway, this is all very interesting. But, okay, if this is true, you see why the warfare has been so bad recently? Because this revelation, I think, is shocking. They're fighting different battles. So, I I can feel a righteous son of God now, but I do not know who he or she is over. You know what territory? Okay. Psalm eighty-two. God stands in the congregation of the mighty. He judges among the what? The gods. Could these be the sons of God? Mm -hmm. I know that Michael Heisner believes that, and so did Tom Hawkins before he went to be the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he knows for sure now. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked, defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, for free them from the hand of the wicked? They do not know, nor do they understand. They walk about in darkness. All the foundation, look at this, all the foundations of the earth are unstable. I said you, you are, are gods. I'm not making this up. I said it. And all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit 
all, what's that? Nations. Nations. The princes. So are the princes the same as the sons of God? So you go to Daniel. Wow, I got a, I got a, I got a question. <laughs> go to Daniel. Daniel. And um, I think it's Daniel... Now, Daniel chapter 10. Mm. What game was I on? And this is the end of the of 21 days of prayer, which of course we call a Daniel fast now. <coughs> uh, 10 verse 3, I ate no pleasant food, nor meat, nor wine came into my mouth. Persian. Nor did uh, Daniel 10 3. I ate no pleasant food, nor meat, or wine came into my mouth. But I know myself at all till all three weeks were fulfilled. So we call this the Daniel fast. Mm -hmm. So then three days later, on the 24th day of the month, uh, an angel shows up. And verse 10, we have, Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man, greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. And he said, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Now, the interesting thing here, of course, is um, that... The prayer was answered immediately, but there was warfare about the coming of the answer. <coughs> and who, who was the war? The prince of the kingdom of Persia. Could the prince be the son of God that was over Persia? We're talking about the original war. Mm -hmm. Withstood me 21 days. And behold, now, remember who we started with this, this morning? Michael. You can't make this stuff up. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, oh, my word. <gasps> Michael is over Israel. Of course. Incidentally, it's thought that there were 70 plus the land allotted to the Lord, which is the 71st. I don't know about Gabriel. Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone. There were the kings of Persia. Okay, now this is interesting. This just comes to me. Jesus. So there are king are there kings under the prince? Would the will those be like the territorial spirits under the Son of God? It would be the ruler. No, I think the rulers are different. Than than a king? Yeah. Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to people in the last days. Verse fifth uh, let's go down to verse um, then he said, Do not know why I have come to you. Now I must go to fight the prince of Persia, and when I am gone, indeed the prince oh. of Greece will come. Oh. So there's another son of God. Mm -hmm. But now this is, comes to me. Is there the prince, which is the son of God? Um, Deuteronomy. And then how, how does Michael fit in the, with that as a chief prince? That's what I'm saying. There's got to be that too. So maybe uh, Michael, as a chief prince, is over, is he over the sons of God? Okay, so we have some comments here. Paul, what if they, the sons of God, by using us as doors and keys and having the same essence as the one who made the universe? And I'm not sure what you mean by that, Barry, but uh, it appears, I, I believe you're right about the one part, 
that we are the ones who give access to the enemy Correct. to the multi-universal worlds. In other words, we, we, we as, as human beings stand, and us, we collectively, are the gates yes. and the doors right. to the realms. Correct. Yeah. Multidimensional. The sphere, by the way, is multidimensional. So, so we think maybe the dimensions may be in spheres, but I don't know. Right. You do? I don't know. I but, think it's a gateway to it. Yeah. So. Okay, so the question is, will that be connected to the grid? Yes. So we are, we are the access points to the grid. Now, actually, you know, as Janice so well put so many times, it really is in. The kingdom of God is within. And, and see, the, the kingdom of heaven is within. The problem is, you see, that we have blocked the kingdom of heaven from coming out to touch the earth. We are the problem. Because of the generational sin. Okay, uh, I'm still my footnote uh, says moved. Uh, okay, verse 6, God judges Elohim. Yeah, it's actually the, uh, the sons of Elohim, which would be the sons of God. Okay, Deb, could you mute your wow. microphone? I guess there's feedback coming. Deb, read. Okay, so now where are we going from here? Okay, now I'm feeling Michael again. Okay, here, let me read this okay. verse. I am in Ezekiel right now. Okay, okay, let's say, okay, Ezekiel. Because what I've noticed, I've been in Ezekiel 44 for some time, which is, I believe, the, um, the, the temple that's being built, not on just the physical end but the temple within. So just to give you some background, and it talks about the doors. Ezekiel's brought through the north gate, which is from within. He's not brought through the front. So it's, then he brings him to the front of the temple. So then I, as Paul was talking, I was realizing how many times I've seen prints all through Ezekiel. And then I looked at this one particular, you know, there's Michael, when you brought up Michael, say to them, thus says the Lord, this burden concerns... Can you're, well, let me just... You're, oh, Ezekiel 12.10. Okay, let's wait. I guess I'll get there. Ezekiel 12.10, because we're going to stay... Okay, I don't have all this, so... Uh, oh! <laughs> okay. <laughs> say to them... Are we there yet? Tell me when. Okay, Ezekiel 12.10. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. Say to them... Thus says the Lord God, the burden concerns the prince in Jerusalem, as well as all the house of Israel who are in it. Interesting. So then, then it goes on. There's just prince all through this. No, I don't know. I... But, it, but I'm, I'm just wondering, the redeemed prince enters in. As for the prince, in Ezekiel 44.3, as for the prince, he shall sit in it as prince to eat the bread before the Lord. And he shall enter the way of the porch of the gate and shall go out the same way. <coughs> um, Brian, would you do a, a search on principalities uh, in the New King James Version? My, uh, my concordance is in um, is New American Standard. I think there's a verse also in Ephesians that's translated principalities. Okay, so Jan, I'm not quite sure to do that yet. There may be so something. Everything. I'm just saying maybe what Paul is saying, these are princes for the redeemed too. Princes for the redeemed. I mean the restored princes yeah. so taking what, territory. What, what I don't know, well, there's a lot that I don't know. But uh, uh, is the earth now controlled by the fallen sons of God? Uh -huh. And is there another set of a righteous sons of God that are waiting to take over. Mm -hmm. So now what I can I feel that, that I am discerning a righteous son of God, so I know that. Um, I, I, brief, I was just in Oklahoma, and briefly I discerned an unrighteous son of God. But uh, when I got into the context of the church where I was, I did not feel like, I didn't discern anymore, which meant I was not supposed to um, do anything with it. So I just have, I have these questions. Okay, Deb... Uh, yeah, Deb, I think 
There's an angel with a message, and it's right on the way. In fact, it's the direction you're looking right now. You want to see if you can get the, the message? Can she hear you? Yeah, you hear me all right? OK, got to mute yourself. Oh, two Deb. Oh, Deb, Hawaii Deb. Deb, one more. OK. That was against you, Deb Reed. OK. Hawaii Deb. Yeah, are you unmuted? Oh, you're still muted. Still muted. Yep, you're still muted. Okay, okay. There you are. Can you hear me now? Yeah. There you <laughs> I'm like on triple mute because we were having a little trouble hearing. So, can okay. you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay. So, I feel like there may be an angel, Deb. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> oh. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> something first okay. I see huge angel armies like in different places on the earth huge they're waiting they're waiting they're waiting they're waiting whoa they're waiting mm. rise up rise up rise up oh whoa gosh there's eyes their eyes are looking. Eyes are looking all over the earth. Those the are the eyes watches. are looking for you. Where are you? Rise up, rise up. Cry out for the father. Cry out for the son. Cry out for the father. Cry out for the father. He's, he's, whoa, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. Oh, the eyes are looking. We see you. We see you. We see you. Rise up. Rise up. Our eyes are on you. Whoa. Whoa. Hey, hey. The veil will be ripped, huh? The what? The veil. The veil will be ripped. The veil will be, oh, will, will be disintegrated. Whoa. The veil, whoa, the veil will be disintegrated soon. Get ready, get ready. You will see, and then you will know, and you will go. You will see, you will know, and you will go. Mm. Oh, oh, there's a word, there's a word. The word, you will be given the word, and the word will be released as a sound, and it will, the, oh, the, an, the oh. armies, the angel armies, <sighs> will fight for you. Hallelujah. Mm, good word. I like that part. I like an all word, but I like that part. <laughs> really Ooh. like that part. Really like that part. Um... Wow, there's like, um, I see now, I see again, I see like a mist on the earth, a mist on the earth, and it's falling, it's falling, and it's, um, ooh, um, that, I think that's going to be part of the veil ripping, and that's all I have. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, Don? Yes. I think you might have something. Okay. Mm. Then we'll have some questions. I 
How do you spell principality? P R I N C I P A L I T I E. Liz, are you saying anything? Okay, so, so I, while you're listening, Don, why don't you tell us what you're getting, Melissa? Um, actually, I was I was seeing, um, I was seeing two angel arms, um, ocean to ocean, from from the area of Israel to America, and I felt like there was an arch going over it. Israel to America, uh huh. And I just kept seeing Jesus over that area. It was like, um, couldn't understand it, but it seemed like there was a new, a new way or something. It was like everybody was lined up, ushering it in. Okay. And I'm still, I don't know, I'm still processing. Okay. Don, you have anything? I agree with that. <laughs> Um, the only thing I heard is he said, I am going to release the righteous sons of God. I am going to release, okay, uh-huh. The righteous sons of God. The righteous sons of God. To invade. To, to invade. To overtake. To overtake. With the armies of God. With the armies of God. Oh, okay, anything else? Some more. I have some Not more. yet. Okay, you have something? Okay. Well, I just keep hearing this verse since you brought up the sons of God. Now, I know these are different, but I think they're connected. And it's in um, Hebrews 12. Um, somewhere in here. Oh, uh, okay. We have some it's, while you're looking at. Okay. The question is Jude 1 6. Tied to this, let me look okay. at let me look at G one six. Incidentally, for all of you that are online, if you would uh, keep your ears to the ground, so to speak, and see if there's any prophetic words that come out about all this, because I feel like that if this this is true, confirmation. Uh, the prophets should be start speaking about this, or may have already. I did a search of the Elijah list words. I didn't find anything on the sons of God yet. Uh, okay. This has been going on a long time for us. That's why I knew versus Timothy Titus. I'm still trying to get to Titus here. Okay, Titus. Titus? I want these. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Jude. Jude 6, right? No one. wonder I was not finding No, there's, there is only one chapter in Jude. <laughs> yes. Sorry. No, it's not. Yeah, right. not Jude 2, 6, 1, 6. Okay. <coughs> okay. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain. Okay, so. That's right. Let me. Uh, domain. Okay, I need to, uh, if you'd be patient with me, I'm going to check that word. Take in, a domain. In the Hebrew, uh, I mean the Greek, rather not the Hebrew, the Greek. Because I found many times uh, the Bible translators transliterate and don't translate. So Jude 1. Eight. Eight. Okay. Okay, Jude. It says domain. Their own domain. So domain can be. Oh my God, I like it. Okay, just a second. I'm trying to find. Uh, so Jude 1, 6. Mm -hmm. Okay. They had a domain. Now, this is the same difficulty I find with the translation of, um, uh, of Revelation chapter 1 where it says that the that the seven stars are the seven angels. angels. Right. The word actually is angelos, and it, it, it actually means messengers. And so um, you have in the Gospels where, where the messengers of John the Baptist were sent. Well, that's not angels, they're messengers. See the problem? 
And so it can be spiritual beings or it can be uh, messengers. So it's very possible here, and the messengers do not keep their proper domain, the main being messengers and not uh, actually angels. So I, I can't push that real hard right now. So that's an answer to the question one six. So it's possible, yes. But here's the interesting thing. They actually had a domain. They had, yeah, their domain. So the word, their own, it's actually abode. Let's see what the word abode means. It means beginning or origin. Uh, it means dwelling place or, or abode. So it actually could be a land area. I actually... Okay, the mist is the glory of God. I would agree with that. But certainly a left temple area also in back of head. So without me being able to see, I can't tell, but I am still feeling now the sons of God. I feel the sons of God and Michael now. Uh, yeah, um, Barbara Reinhardt says, um, my trust is say position of authority. The word actually is abode, uh, and it's uh, in Strong's, uh, All right, cool. It means for dwelling place, abode. Okay. Now, we're transitioning again. Okay, and the seven spirits of God are showing up. Okay, so now oh. it's getting really, really hot. Do you feel this? Okay. Became, and I, I want, so, Lord, the seven spirits of God are showing up where we are. I think that's true. It's like, women, it's like when I fill up with a hot flash. It's getting really, really hot. So look at that, Isaiah 11. Whew. Oh. Okay, these are the seven spirits of God. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. Uh, so the Spirit of the Lord, this is like a menorah. So the center branch is the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, that's the next branch on the menorah. On counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So these are the seven spirits of God. So which one is this? So I go through the names to see which one I get a hit with. So mm. Spirit of the Lord, wisdom, understanding, counsel, and might. Knowledge of the fear of the Lord. I think it's wisdom. Like the spirit of wisdom is here. If you look at Zechariah chapter 4. Oh. Action of Revelation it says the seven spirits burning. That's why they're... They're burning. It's really hot. So Zechariah 4. <clears throat> In fact, let's go to Zechariah 3 first. Zechariah 3, 8. <clears throat> Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before me, for they are wondrous science. For behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. So there's the branch again. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon the stone are seven eyes. Behold, I will grave his inscription, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity in the land of that day. Then go down to Zechariah 4. Verse 10, For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice... See, and actually this is the word stone, not plumb line. The stone in the hand is rubble. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which scan through, to and fro throughout all the earth. So the seven are the seven eyes of the Lord, which are the seven spirits of God. Um... If you, a torch if you, on my head right if now. If you look uh, <laughs> at uh, Revelation chapter 
Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, and from the throne proceeding lightnings, lightnings, thunderings, and voices, seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, and they are the seven spirits of God. Mm. So the seven, and then you look down, uh, oh, talks about the, the lamb. Okay, where's, I left my Bible at home, so I'm trying to, I know where it is in my Bible. <laughs> it talks about the seven eyes of the Lamb, which are the seven spirits of God. Amen. So it's the seven eyes, seven lambs, eyes of the Lamb, um, the seven eyes oh. in, the, in the stone, and the um, seven lamps burning. So wisdom is here. So the Lord wants to give us wisdom. Okay, Jen, I'm going to put you in the center again because I think Michael has a message now. I'll certainly try. That's all you can do, Jen, is try. <laughs> or not. Which is interesting. I, I just saw this circle of flame before. Oh, you did? Yeah, when you were talking about the sevenfold. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, Lord, we need you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Mm. Mm. Okay, Barry, that's a good comment. We'll get that after Jenny gets the um, word. We won't be turned to, to Daniel 7, 710. Brian, could you email those to me? Mm. Whoa. <sighs> okay, so I feel it's, Michael right here, and I feel extra pressure, which tells that he has a message for us. Oh, it's been given you to know. Okay, it has. Uh -huh. The rite of passage, the safe way. The highway. To know the authority of the kingdom of God. Let the redeemed say so. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Oh, oh the anointing is really getting stronger. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Ho shanaka ha. He niki shiniko ho. He naka shaniki he nika ha. He, he, he. Oh. And it was for Elijah to pray for rain. It was first noticed. It was for? First noticed by a cloud the size of a man's hand. <coughs> oh. And all authority for the kingdom of God. Is at the hand of man. And so the eye of the Lord is on Israel, the city of the great king, Jerusalem. The Prince of Peace. is always 
the head of the government. And there'll be no end. Oh, you were called to Mount Zion, to the new Jerusalem, to the myriads of angels. This is the order, the protocol. to the General Assembly, to God, the judge, and to the spirit of righteous men made perfect, to Christ, the mediator, and the sound of the blood that speaks a better word. Oh, this is... One second. Okay. For the counsel of God is in the revealed sons. This order this government is aligned to the spirit of righteous men made perfect. For what was is and what will be is now. You are the connector that reve- releases the creative realm of heaven on earth. So what is bound in heaven is bound in earth. the true order of government. Oh. Oh. So it was for Israel. Say again? So it was for Israel. So it is for the United States. We're the only nation that was founded on the rock of Christ still carries my name. Oh, wow, that was annoying. So it's judgments. So it's justice. So the reconciliation is my government. And you will teach the world. <sighs> For my eye is with, upon you. <clears throat> Searching to and fro that I may show my strength among you. My true order. the priest and king, the order of Melchizedek shall really, shall truly be seen. Mm. Open, open, open. I I just see open, 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 open. Gates, but like a corridor. You know, like a long hallway. uh (sighs) Opening, opening, opening. (sighs) 
and there is a government of rule established by Gates. Some were the mind of man. Others were heaven's gate. A sphere of influence, a ruling yet determined to turn back the battle. Ruling, yep. Determined. You're coming through them. Oh man, my head is gonna blow up. I think that's it. Okay, <clears throat> so let's uh, start looking at some of the, um, the comments coming out over the internet. <clears throat> so Barry says, so is this where we go to Daniel 7.10? So let's go to Daniel 7.10. Oh, I, I can't get back. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. That was really anointed. In fact, start with Daniel 7, 10, 7, 9. Daniel 7, 9, I watched till thrills were put in place. And oh. the Ancient of Days was seated. His oh garment was God. white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. Its wheels of burning fire, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him, a thousand thousand minutes to him, and ten thousand, ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were open, and I watched them because of the sound of the pompous words. And I, I think you may be right about that, Barry. The river of fire, and that is what gets me excited, because what I saw is that nothing, nothing can stand before that river of fire. Barry, this is absolutely astonishing. Because I was in I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And Sunday night, uh, we had just um, we had been doing some things dealing with Molech, which is burning the children in fire. And all of a sudden, and then uh, uh, we felt the Lord cleanse the land in Oklahoma or part of the land anyway. But then we felt I felt this molten lava. And I, I can understand, but it, 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 was, uh, it was like anointing, but, but the anointing was like thick, like lava. And all of us felt it, and it, it was so powerful. And I am wondering, oh, that is the river of fire coming from the throne of God. Mixed with water, but it was, it was dense. That's the only way I can describe it. It was like dense anointing. Uh, did she say a circle of fire? Did you say a circle of fire? Yeah. Please. Oh, I'm feeling that right now again. Can you feel that? I think where we are, I fit, think this is that lava or the, the fire coming from the throne of God. It's like I get it. Well, it took me a while. It was 24 hours. Okay, uh, regarding the sons of God, Paul Keith Davis is all about this topic, speaks and teaches on it. The information is available on his blog. Uh, Barbara, could, uh, could you send me that blog address? Does he teach that the sons of God are spiritual, or does he say that we are the sons of God? Uh, I, okay. And uh, sanctified time, not a holiness. Okay. Oh, okay. Brian sent me the link. Thank you, Brian. Okay. The Sabbath comes first, a holy people, a holiness in time, erection of tabernacle of holiness in space, not commanded. Um, Okay, I'm not quite sure what was being said about the um, tabernacle and the Sabbath. Getting a strong pressure on my right upper back of my head as she prophesied. What does that mean? So I would think 
that you're actually discerning the, um, Michael bring the message. Now, what I'm feeling now is I feel the, the sons, the righteous sons, so I'm feeling the sons of God. I'm actually feeling the sons of God. So, Lord, where are they? Where, where are we that we're discerning the sons of God? Or what does that look like? Yes, um, someone thought that the ring of fire, which was, on, which was what the eclipse was called, Sunday night was prophetic. And was, that was the very night I felt the fire of God coming. And then Janice sees the ring of fire. So, yes, there could be something to that. Okay, this is a good question. Lord, where are the righteous sons of God now? Does anybody have an idea? Where are the righteous sons of God now? I think we, I think we're in the council. We're in the, we're in the council of the sons of God. Is that right, Melissa? Okay, you seen something? Help me. I, I just, I, I'm seeing a whole courtroom. Well, it's like a courtroom. Can it's tell like us what the you're Congress seeing? one. It's like a really huge one. And there's a table down in the middle. It's like down, down there, and we're all seated up here. And it's, it's like um, there's seven. There's seven beings, I guess, placed around the table. But I don't know what we're supposed to do. Are there seven? Mm -hmm. Around only one table. It's a very long rectangular. Now, table. what I did not tell you is that when. This lady first gave the revelation to the sons of God. She saw them at tables of seven. Okay, so okay, let me ask the Lord. Lord, are there seven? Are there more than seven? Okay, so I can confirm. I think there are seven sons of God around this table. So, Lord, what are we to do about that? Who are these seven? Okay. So you said, yes, 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 I saw it so long ago. It will heal the na natives and the land. Okay, what will heal the natives and the land? What did you see, Barry? What did you see uh, several years ago? The, the council or the court? The wedding ring of fire from his throne, just a thought, ring of fire in the sky. Oh, when you said wedding ring, that's really strong. Okay, Daniel, oh, Daniel 727. Uh, I haven't got the answer to my question about if Paul Keith Davids believes the fall, the, the sons of God are, are spiritual beings or humans. Daniel 7, or oh, humans, okay. Huh, he does? Yeah. I didn't get that before. 727. Um, then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints, the most high. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dom dominion shall serve and obey him. Um, this is the end of the account. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly troubled me. My account has changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. So we welcome with new ones that are online now. We have 31 online. Be interested to know where you are online, what countries. We actually did this time of day so that we would be available to other parts of the earth. There's something about the earth in Definitely. this. Definitely. Okay, do we know what this table is yet? Uh, no, I don't know. It seems like it's in a, it's a council of some sort, and I keep seeing an eagle, and I kept, keep hearing that it's liberty. Mm, that's good. Okay, those online, we're trying to determine, uh, it sounds like we are, we are in a place where there is a table and there are seven spiritual sons of God here. I keep hearing, learn from these. Okay, learn from these. So we still haven't got the spirit of wisdom 
released, I don't think. Ask for understanding. Lord, we ask for understanding. For wisdom and understanding. Okay, you're just starting around the face, neck, and chest warmth circle. So I, I feel like maybe you're feeling the, the, the sons of these righteous sons of God also. What'd you get? I just feel like all of them are there. Um, the seven spirits of God. Well, seven spirits of God are there also. I think that that's what they all are. But they're all named. They're all named. Wisdom. Well, the sons of God. The seven, the sons of God are different than the spirits. Seven spirits of God, though. Definitely. That's what I'm seeing there. Okay. That's what I'm seeing there. I don't know what I'm seeing, but that's what I'm seeing. Don't you understand it. You see the seven spirits of God or the seven sons of God? They're dressed. They're. Whoa. It's almost like they're in a judge, like a judge uniform. All seven of them. But I'm actually feeling like they're all um, the wisdom, counsel, Ow. understanding. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I, my, what I'm since I'm, it's hard for me to talk because I'm still there. But um, the seven spirits are like around them, and they're within the circle. I, I felt that also that the seven spirits of God were around, around them. Yeah, and they're in assistance, which is they're in counsel of the seven spirits of God. Yes. That, so that these right. seven is a number of completion. This is the order that's needed to uh, bring a full revelation, the seven sons. They're not all the sons, but they are the council that the spirits of God have chosen. Lord, are we to ask them to do something? I think we're supposed to ask them to do something. Oh, I just... So we have Sandra in the UK. Welcome, Sandra. UK. Look what I heard just before that. Ask for the nations. Ask for the nation. <laughs> I feel like we're supposed to ask God to have them do something. I think that's right, Brian. <laughs> the question is, what are we to ask? Ask them. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing the scripture, the seven times 70. I feel like it has something to do with forgive the nation. Ask them to uh, somehow mm. repent for the nations or something to do with that. It's forgiving. Oh, seven times 70. We are to forgive seven times 70. So it's... Okay, uh, Sonia, I see us in the upper seating too. I can feel the anointing heavy also. Uh, Sonia, do you know what we're supposed to pray? Oh. Or ask the Lord to do? It's a canopy over it all. Two times, one last Thursday, and then on Sunday, first on Thursday, a picture of a woman and a golden eagle, and then on Sunday, a high school commencement mascot is golden eagle, so just unusual, but not sure it means anything, except that you saw the eagle too? Who saw the yeah. eagle? Melissa saw the eagle. Barry said, I saw a river of fire coming and nothing stood before it. You know, I said that that Sunday night when, we, when I felt the lava flow, that nothing could stand in this. Mm. It would burn away everything. Oh, the natives were bound is. by contracts and a line of Indian on horses Impaled on the horses, went all the way to the horizon. There was a fiery rock and native land, and the river went through it and cleaned the garbage up. The natives and the land are linked. I absolutely agree. Yeah. Don, I heard that the sons of God are in his heart, in his chamber. Chambers, chambers, chambers. Oh, that feels anointed. That's where we are. Opening. We're, we're in a chamber. Yeah. Seven pillars of wisdom, beatitude of hearts. Lord told me a year ago... Deuteronomy 424 would be huge and clean of the holy fire of California. So look at Deuteronomy 4, 24. Oh. Oh. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. There you go. What do you do with Joel 2? Did you consider that? The nope. noise is this Joel 2 5. Okay, just a second. Joel 2 5. Two. Well, actually, 3 you can go. Okay, let's look at Joel. We're so hard to find these minor prophets. Uh, Joel 2, okay, go ahead. Hey, this is 3, 2, 3. A fire devours before them and behind them. 
a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them. And behind them is desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses and like the swift feet, so they run. With a noise like chariots over mountains, and they leap, like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Before them, the people wither in pain, all faces. Yep, that's the same thing. Yeah, the fire before them. The fire before them. Okay, um, the need to check with Skype people, okay? Oh, Don? Yes. Okay. I think Brian is trying to tell me you have something. <laughs> you have something? Deb, you have something? Deb. Deb, Deb. Babor, Babor or Deb Reed. Okay, Deb, Hawaii Deb has something. <laughs> okay. okay, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, as soon as you're asked, the, you're talking about the elder, or not elders, but the sons of God around the table and the seven spirits behind them. I started seeing um, different, um, like uh, native tribes have like um, designs. So I started seeing cloth or kapa, as we call it. Um, there's, but the Hawaiians have it, Samoans have it, all the most of the native islanders have it. I started seeing those kind of designs, and then they were laid out on the table and they were looking at them and then i started seeing maps or yeah maps mm. not one big map but each person or had oh. a map each son of god had a map okay and that i just want to say that so hey, can I you tell I'll text it what <laughs> all seven of those maps encompass the whole earth uh yes so maybe they had sections of it. Could it be possible that these the seven are administratively over the whole earth? Yes. Okay. I, I mean, well, each map okay. equaled the whole, I mean, were oh. part of the whole earth. They didn't have, like, one earth map in front of them. They had a section of the earth in front of them. Okay. I guess I've map. just been, okay. I've just been, as you've been looking at the States, I've been looking at Australia, and I've been seeing, I see, I saw the massive, Warring angels up in the northeast, like over Arnhem Land. I've seen the, I saw the fire coming out of the rock, out of Ayers Rock. And I see the map of Australia and New Zealand on the table. Wow. Mm. Uh, <coughs> I'm thinking too, I have this, um, that these seven are the complete ruling that we come in agreement with for what is coming up. Every gate and position in Australia, Hawaii, UK, what we have assembled here. That, that okay, okay, here we go. Um, I, I just saw uh, the Council of the Elders, which is how the Aboriginals rule. I, I just saw that being replaced <coughs> with the new council. Okay, should we ask the Ancient of Days to make a judgment in favor of states according to Daniel 7? 21 to 25 on wow. uh, the mantle of peace, healers, and reconciliation of heart. Okay, let's go back to Daniel again. Welcome to my world. My name is Jesus. <coughs> <Not again. coughs> okay, so Lord, shall we ask? you to make a judgment in favor of the saints so that we can take our position of ruling and reigning. Does that sound right? They're very active about it. Yes. Who, okay, who's very active about it? The sons of God. Okay. These righteous ones, they're looking pretty happy. It's about time they got it. <laughs> okay, so uh, can we all come in agreement for all of our nations? Yes. <laughs> and Lord Jesus, uh, Ancient of Days, Heavenly Father, Elohim, uh, Ancient of Days, we Excellent. come before you according to your invitation, and we ask that you will rule in favor of the saints mm. of God Most High and in favor of establishing um, the righteous sons of God on the earth. Oh. 
For your word says that all creation is waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. And so, Lord, we ask now that you will do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we appeal now before you as the Ancient of Days to decide oh. according to your spoken word oh my God. in favor of the saints, the redeemed people, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ our Savior. Oh, my God. And Lord, oh. please assign the land to the righteous one. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm just hearing the land allotted to the righteous. To lead us in that. Um, the Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Okay. Would you establish? The Lord Jesus, please establish. Our um, our land territories. Our land territories. Back to the righteous. Back to the righteous. Mm -hmm. And I have a sense that, Lord, we do this as a legal matter, not as a warfare matter. That's right. This is a legal decision. We are not, we are not taking on something that we should not take on. We're just asking for the court in heaven to decide. That's the right battle. Yes, for Lord, this is your battle and not ours. I was hearing that it, it, is, it is the legal battle, not a warfare. I was hearing that. Okay, say that again. I was hearing it's a legal battle, not a warfare battle. So this is a court battle. So we not have to a, take it to court. Before the books are open. I feel this is really true. This is a court battle. There, there are many being released right now. Yep. Um, they were trespassing. When we were reading the scripture about the um, angels not going to the domain, they did not stay in their proper domain. Right. What I got was that they were trespassing, and I feel like there's something we're supposed to do about that. Okay, and Laura, we, we now come to the heavenly court, and we ask um, that, that as the Ancient of Days, as the God of all gods, the ruler of all rulers, oh. the God of all sons of God, that you would not allow any more trespassing, illegal trespassing into unrighteous, uh, into others' domains, and Lord, they must remain, and Lord, we, we petition the court to issue a decree that they must remain in their own estate, in their own domain. Mm. And Lord, we ask this to be executed as a legal decision. Mm. Yes, I believe we are certainly sons of God also. But we work in conjunction with them. Yeah, I, th I like that, Jenna. We work in conjunction with the spiritual sons of God. Found on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, this is, this is really the Lord's prayer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Let your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as done in heaven. So this is a heavenly decision first, <coughs> and then takes place on earth. Are we witnessing the legal transfer of domains? Yeah, they're passing, um, they're passing something to each other, like a transference, just as far as he said that. Oh, so it appears yes. Domains are both um, spiritual and in the natural. Yeah, so this is the same idea that seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, then it, all, all the these things will be done unto you here. So this is taking place in the heavens first. There's paperwork passing, being passed around. Okay, uh, Genesis paperwork being passed around. Sonia writes, this is big regarding the, the trespassing. I'm all... Okay. I'm sensing that it's deeds and titles mm -hmm. to the earth. Yeah, new edits, too. What, what I think is happening, we, we are... We, we have stepped into our authority of, of, of ruling and reigning, and so we're, just, we're, not, we're not warring to rule and reign. We're just going to court saying, this is now legally ours because of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. His blood shed for, 
yes, for us you've been in his, up with him. and he in his resurrection power. So this is a legal matter. I, I agree, Melissa. Yeah, okay. I okay. I'm I'm seeing like um these they look like spiritual beings of some kind of warrior type that are standing all around the courtroom and they have staffs in their hand and they're just declaring. It's like they're coming into agreement mm -hmm. with whatever is going on down there in the ruling area. 